I had a piece of equipment on that I did not realize I had on. So my apologies for the tech issues. Um, <laughs> uh, isn't technology crazy? Um, anyway, uh, good morning, Facebook land. Uh, my name is Tara. I am uh, the owner and an artist at The Painted Cicada. And um, I haven't been live a lot lately. So I just, um, I really just wanted to plan some lives and have some fun. And today I just wanted to paint. Um, I am a mixed media artist and uh, I spend a lot of time making mixed media. I make it to sell. I make it to teach. I teach it. Um, and sometimes I just like to grab some paints and be creative and paint. So um, today I am going to make a flamingo. I've just got, um, I like to use these canvas panels when I'm just playing. Um, so I've got, I my 12 canvas um, that I'm gonna use today to paint my flamingo. And with that being said, I am going to add myself here so you can see what I'm working on, and we'll get started. Um, I've got a whole lot of paint colors that I'm going to use today. Um, I really like to, uh, when I make flamingos, uh, you may have noticed um, in the intro. I call them a flamingo as in fan go because I love uh, to make lots of movement and um, just lots of um, brush strokes. And so that's what I'm going with today using lots of colors. Um, so for my background, um, I've got a sandy color and I've got a really, really pale uh, blue. And so I'm just going to mix some of these up. I'm just going to pour them right on my canvas here. And I'm just going to blend them out. This one nice. This blue is a brand that I don't use very often and it's really thick. So I might add just some touches of white in there. Just to thin it out, create some variation. Too worried about my background being super smooth and perfect because I'm going to cover a lot of it with my flamingo.
pretty fast and easy background. I want the focus to be on my actual flamingo, so I wasn't too worried about it. All right, quick and easy background. Blend it up, be done with it. Um, I used a color called Arctic Blue, and I've got this Deco Art Americana in um, buttermilk. I just wanted to pick two really light colors for my background uh, and go from there. And so I'm going to dry this really quickly, and then I'm going to move right into the flamingo. the worst part waiting for the paint to dry um one thing i really love about these deco art paints um is that they dry really uh really quickly uh which makes it very convenient to make layers so that's why i use craft paint a lot when I'm just painting for fun or I know I'm going to paint with a lot of layers. All right, that is mostly dry. Um, and now I am going to teach you the big secret uh, to making flamingos. And that is uh, drawing a backwards S or a forwards S, depending on which way you want it to go. Um, so basically, a flam the shape of a flamingo, right? We start here at the beak is we get these curvy necks and i'm just going right over um the top of my acrylic paint here because i know that i'm going to paint over the top of it so i can be a little sketchy um with it here so uh right at the base of this curve here um that's kind of where we would picture the wing and then uh I kind of have the back here and I'm going to go right to the bottom of my page and then um, the neck curves up and then right about here see, I'm going to create this um, a beak here. All right, so are we feeling the flamingo? Okay, so I just kind of sketch it on. I don't need exact placement because all this is going to get covered. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint most of the details in. Uh, I just wanted to have an idea of where everything is going to go. All right, now the palette that I'm going to use today um, I want most of my painting to be with these nice, fun pastel colors. Uh, Deco Art has a color of the month this month called, um, oh, it's a coral. Coral, it's a coral. It's a beautiful, beautiful coral, um, which I'm using with jadeite glass and uh, lilac meadow, which I think is also a new color. So I've got these really pretty um, pastels here. Um, but when I saw their color of the month, I immediately thought flamingo. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Whew. So, um, I want these to be my main colors. So what I did was I picked out these three colors, and then I picked out three um, darker shades of the colors. So um, I've got this coral here. There's a lighter one and a darker one. Um, I've got my jadeite glass. I just picked out a darker shade. And the lilac meadow, I just picked out a darker shade. And it doesn't have to be, you know, an exact match. Uh, what I'm going for here is just a darker version of the colors that I chose. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to put some of this dark. I'm going to start dark and I'm going to work light. So I want my dark to be in the background there. I'm just going to put some on my palette. And I am going to... Get kind of a, a small to medium sized brush here. And I'm just going to start at the top of my flamingo with lots of brush strokes. And I am just going to work on this flamingo from the bottom layer all the way up by adding lots of brush strokes and varying colors. And I'm going to follow. Um, the lines here that I sketch, not exactly. Uh, the idea here is I'm not coloring it in. I just want to create movement and direction with the lines or the paint strokes that I'm making. I want your eye to follow these brush strokes. I like to make sure I go off my page as well, or off my canvas. I don't want anything to be too rigid. So I know a lot of this is going to get co covered. I'm not uh, too worried about everything looking perfect, especially at this point. I'm just patching in some color. All right, I feel like I've got pretty good coverage there. I'm going to rinse off my brush. And I'm going to move into my next dark color, which is this dark teal here. Um, I just chose a dark complement to the jadeite glass there. The reason why I'm not giving you these dark colors is because I don't, I don't want you to fixate too much on uh, the names of the colors, right? I just want you to find one that complements um, the colors that you choose. So if you're using the jadeite glass and the coral, like I am, just go ahead and work through your paint stash and find one that you like. I'm just layering these this baby up. I'm not worried about the paints being wet or dry. Boy. I forgot to mention um, that I will be going live all month, every Tuesday and Wednesday. Well, every Wednesday and Thursday I'll be live. Every Tuesday I'll have a time-lapse tutorial. It's my way of committing to some art time.
Right. So my last color here is kind of a, a mulberry purple. It's just my dark complement to the lilac meadow that I am going to use. So just going to add my last layer of dark base here. The more colors I add, the more brush strokes I add. More like a flamingo it looks, right? trick here is just to make sure my paintbrush is nice and loaded with paint. I don't I don't want to see um, any of that canvas show through where I'm making my brush stroke. So Right. Now I mentioned um, I want most of my palette here to be light. So I just added a base of darker colors. Um, and I'm going to set these aside because I'm going to focus on my lighter colors now. Here is my lighter coral. And I know I'm going to use a little more of the light than I did with the dark. So I'm going to put a little more on my palette here. Lilac Meadow and Jadeite Glass are like two of my crazy favorite colors. I use them all the time. I love them. So now I'm going to come back through and I'm just going to add more brush strokes here, the slight coral. And I'm still using this like small to medium sized brush. Um, I actually probably should have switched to a smaller brush. That was my plan initially in my head, but I didn't with the coral. So I'm going to do some strokes here of this light coral. This brush, and then I'll, I'll do my other colors with a smaller brush. Again, I'm not worried about the paints being wet or well, whether they're wet or dry on the bottom layers, because if they blend, that's okay. That just creates some fun color, some fun variation, which is what I like. I really like to work kind of in this impressionist style here. Not realistic. If I wanted something realistic, I would just I would do photography. Um, some friends who I've got some friends who do really, really beautiful photography. But I like to play. All right, so I'm going to find just a smaller brush. Um, here, I'm going to use a smaller round. 
I try not to think too much about the brushes. So I'm moving on to this jade color, jadeite glass. As I layer up, I'm just um, being aware of, if, are there any places where the canvas is showing through? Do I need to add um, any coverage anywhere specific? Little by little, I'm just layering up some fun brush strokes. Covering up areas where I see the canvas poking through. There's just little peeps of canvas here and there. Next up is this lilac meadow. I think with this one, I'm gonna kind of leave the center wing shape. Uh, with no lilac meadow, just to uh, add a little variation to maybe suggest there's a different part of the wing. Next, oh, I feel like I have to sneeze. I'm gonna mute for a second. Oh, excuse me. Okay, that was an awkward surprise. All right, so now I'm just gonna add some light. <laughs> All right. Now with the white, what I'm gonna do is. Draw in my beak here. If I pick up some of the other colors, so be it. This is kind of a blendy, blendy fun painting anyway, right? Gonna add the tiniest bit of black right here at the tip, and I'm going to going to work it up. into this grayness. The black paint usually has a lot of pigment, so I'm gonna add some white in there. Blend the white towards the black so I don't darken that whole beak there. Make that tip nice and black though. All right. So there's my beak. I'm 
Now, I want to add some white and some strategic areas. So right here, I'm going to add white where I want my eye to be. And then I'm going to add some white um, kind of along the top of the head here, along the top of the back. Um, because this is where, you know, maybe there's some highlights from the sun. And then maybe just I'm going to add some where I feel like the top of that wing might be. And then I am going to revisit this dark coral color. And I'm going to add some of this where my shadows might be. So like under the wing, the bottom of the neck here. Wherever there might be some darkness. And then I might even come back, since I have some on my palette here, just add a little bit more of this burgundy mulberry color where there's shadows. It's up to you, however you want your flamingo. Together nicely. Now I'm just going to get a fine, a fine brush here. I am going to add in some details. So for the flamingo eye, add a nice little black circle. Some detail there. I also want the center of his mouth or the center of his beak to be visible. Might add just touch of black under that wing. And what I like to do is come back and just add um, kind of a touch of whimsy with some lines. I kind of already did that there, but maybe maybe some Lines in black. Might add just a touch of white to that eye. There. Just follow some of these lines with white. That's it for my flamingo. He's kind of fun. Uh, hi, Glenda. Thank you. Glenda says it looks good so far. She asks, what is my paint laid out on? Do you mean this, this, this palette here? Um, if this is what you're talking about, this is actually just a piece of ceramic, um, and I cover it with plastic wrap so that I can reuse it. Um, I use it kind of a lot. Uh, it's actually, um, since you know I'm crazy about cicadas, so much so I painted, or I named my business the Painted Cicada. Um, it's actually a piece of pottery with a bunch of cicadas on it. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> um, but that's what I use, and I just put a piece of plastic over it so I can change it every so often. And then, yeah, um, what I use when my paint dries out is I have this little mister here, um, and sometimes I just squirt it on there. It's, 
if it looks like my paint's getting dry, I like to use that. And I think since I've got some of this paint left over here, I might um, I might thin out some of these darker colors. Thank you, Glenda. I hope maybe you're inspired if you like flamingos or you like this flamingo watch. Watch the video here and make one. They're super easy. Flamingos are super easy um, to make. They're just a lot of fun little brush strokes. So now I'm just adding some splatter because I have paint left over. So why not, right? I think I'm done with my flamingo. Well, hold this baby up to the camera so you can see. I just added some splatters. Um, the flamingo, really super fun to make, super easy. It's just layers upon layer upon layer of different brush strokes. So I hope I have inspired you. Um, Anybody who's watching now with me live, um, or if you're watching on the replay, um, shout out to you as well. Um, I hope that you're inspired to make a flamingo, uh, my Fleming Van Gogh. Um, let me go ahead and this off. There we go. So here's my flamingo. Um, and if you do, please share it with me and share it with others um, in the group Mixed Media Crazy um, run by the Painted Cicada so everybody can see uh, this fun flamingo that you might make. And if you have also joined me, um, if you find value in any of the paintings um, in my free classes, I encourage you to buy me a paintbrush. It just um, is helpful to continue to provide these free lessons, free tutorials. And I am so thankful uh, for everybody that has joined me today. Uh, thanks for commenting, Glenda. Thanks for everybody who joins me on the replay. And I will see you soon. Have a good day, everybody.